Hi, my name is Max Claps, and I'm the IDC Lead Transportation Analyst in EMEA. Today, I'm really happy to have Karsten Oberle joining me. Karsten leads the rail industry enterprise business at Nokia, and he has a wealth of experience that spans from communication technologies to IoT to analytics and cybersecurity. So I'm keen to get his opinion on the results of a study that we conducted on behalf of Nokia on the railways industry digital transformation and the role of the future railways mobile communication system. Karsten, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to speak with you and let's get right into it. In the other two podcasts, we spoke about the fact that as many as 80% of the railways that we interviewed are piloting, investing, or putting together their investment case for FRMCS. On the one end, as an opportunity to, of course, enhance reliability, security, interoperability, dynamic bandwidth provisioning compared with the previous generation of GSMR technology, but also to push the boundaries of business innovation to look for innovative use cases that they can support with FRMCS. But it's a complex journey, so they cannot do it alone. They need partners like Nokia. Isn't that the case? Max, yes. Great speaking um, with you about this topic, which we take really seriously at Nokia and invest a lot into. So definitely we know that railway senior leaders are keen to accelerate the deployment of 5G FRMCS. But we also understand at the same time that we have technical and organizational challenges that they need to tackle first. And that's exactly where we want to come in and help them. So we want to be a partner that can support the roadmap by bringing our expertise on the technical, but also the business evolution from GSMR to FRMCS. So that means that providing our reliable and innovative products is not enough. So we also need to bring expertise and experience on system integration, as well as our partners' ecosystems to support the whole life cycle of deployment and maintenance across all of the layers of the FRMCS architecture. So we need to put on the table our understanding of railways' key operational needs so that we help test and scale fast innovative use cases through industry best practices. And we need to provide the reassurance that our solutions and expertise spans both FRMCS and GSMR, so that we can help smoothen migration and coexistence between the two standards, so GSMR and FRMCS, for a few more years. Absolutely, Carson. Let me pick on the last point, migration, which is really key. And in fact, a few of the executives that we interviewed talked about their roadmap to FRMCS. Based on the expertise that you and your team built in so many years in the industry, what are key steps in building a roadmap towards FRMCS? Yes, for sure. We see that really every day with railways that have used our GSMR solutions for many years and are now involving us in their FRMCS roadmaps. So it starts with taking a more collaborative approach to design FRMCS. It's not something a small group of critical um, communication engineers is doing or even can do behind closed doors. It's really a collaborative approach needed here. And while we see so many already deployments happening, so pre-FRMCS deployments, like in Australia, and also trials in, in Europe especially, like Deutsche Bahn in Germany, it still will need a couple of more years until we see full or the first full FRMCS deployments, also because the final specification of URC is not yet ready. So this means in the meantime, there's still a lot which we can and should do before the full FRMCS deployments can happen. And there are a couple of topics I just want to mention, which are already of value today. We don't have to wait for the big bang of FRMCS later on. So that's really something we should and really must do today. First one I would like to mention is GSMR virtualization. So GSMR is still running a couple more years. For instance, like virtualization of core components, which are running still some of them on bare metal today. A second topic clearly is the modernization of the transport network. So everything moving towards full IP. So we are working with this already with customers and, and that's super important for the preparation and the future towards FRMCS. A third topic I would like to mention is voice enhancements. So also on the road towards FRMCS, like introducing IMS for roaming into carrier networks for voice. And the fourth topic, which is extremely important out of our view, is cybersecurity. It's of paramount importance to have the mission-critical networks as secure as we can do them, 
Um, and that's already important today. So we can start and we should start today to invest as much as we can to secure the mission critical networks, because also this will be then of use and of benefit when we introduce um, FRMCS later on. And in the meantime, while we all do these preparatory steps towards FMCS, of course, we also prepare in Nokia the full portfolio um, required for our customers for FMCS. Thanks a lot, Karsten. And, and thanks, everyone, for listening. This concludes our series of podcasts. If you're keen to learn more about the results of our FMCS study, please read the info brief titled Powering Next Generation Railways with 5G FMCS. Thank you.